Today I'm going to show you how to take great photos of your works of art using just your smartphone. We'll also go through the process of how to set up and light two and three dimensional works of art. I'll also demonstrate some free and paid apps that will help you take great photos, edit them, and then share them. There are hundreds of photo editing apps in the App Store, but the ones we're going to focus on are PS Express, ProCam, Snapseed, and the default camera and photos apps. I also recommend taking a look at Moment. Before we start taking photos, we need to find a space with some good natural lighting, preferably on an overcast day. I'm going to use a dining room chair to get my objects at a good comfortable height, and then a piece of poster board to serve as my backdrop. You can also use two pieces of poster board, one on the floor and one on the wall, creating a nice right angle. If you've got really large work, you can use a large white bed sheet. Simply take to your wall. Before we start taking photos, we do need to make some changes to the settings on our phone. Open the Settings app and then scroll down until you see Display and Brightness. There are two features here that we need to turn off. One of those is True Tone. True Tone measures the ambient lighting in the room and adjusts your screen accordingly, making it more blue or orange. So the first thing we need to do is turn it off. The other setting we need to turn off is what is called Night Shift. Night Shift slowly changes the color of your screen so there's less blue light emitted as it gets later into the evening. If we use our phone to edit photos and leave this feature turned on, when we view them on a computer screen, they'll appear much more blue. So we need to turn that off as well. The first app we're going to look at is ProCam. ProCam has lots of features that are very similar to a traditional DSLR. If we start at the top, we can see that there are multiple file formats that we can actually photograph in. The raw file format will allow complete control when you go into the editing process. The downside to this file format is their extremely large size, which means that you'll have to export them as a JPEG before they can be displayed on a website. The next file format is TIFF, which is another uncompressed file format. It allows for great flexibility when editing, but similar to the raw file format, and must be exported as a JPEG because it's too large to be used on a website. The last file format on ProCam is what they call Smart. Smart can create standalone JPEG images or can be toggled on with any other file format to create both a RAW or TIFF and a JPEG file format. If your work has complex colors or lots of details, I recommend shooting in a RAW file format. This will allow for greater flexibility and precise color control when you edit your photos. At the top right of the app, you can choose which lens you're going to use, such as ultra-wide, wide, or telephoto. At the top left, you can choose whether to have your flash on or off. When photographing works of art, you always want to leave your flash off. At the bottom, starting from left to right, you have auto exposure, shutter speed control, ISO, autofocus, auto white balance, and exposure, focus, white balance lock. You can allow your phone to automatically adjust these settings, which in most cases is fine. Or if you need greater control, you can tap these and then manually adjust the settings. There are additional notes on ProCam's website that discusses how each of these settings work in greater detail. When you start photographing your work, you want to make sure that your lighting is as even as possible. If you do have harsh shadows on one side, you can bring in an additional lamp to try to wash out some of those shadows. As you're taking your photos, be careful that you're not casting a shadow onto the work that you're trying to photograph. When I'm taking photos, there's a few things that I'm paying attention to. I want to make sure that the object is in the middle of my frame and that I've got a good border around the outside edge, in case I need to crop it later. I'm also aware that I'm standing in front of a window, which means that I may get some cast shadows from my head or my hand as I try to take these photographs. Whenever I'm photographing my own works of art, especially if it's large three-dimensional sculptures, I never want to have to photograph it again. And so I take lots of photographs in different lighting, and I also make sure that my background is really clean. Now I'll show you how to edit some of those photos in the free Google app Snapseed. So we'll find the photo we want to edit, open it, and then use some of the tools to make our changes. One of the first things I like to do is crop my image. You can always undo whatever changes you made. 
with two-dimensional work, so I want to crop the image so it's right up to the edge of the work of art. You can see in this photo, when I zoom in, I didn't quite get the crop just right. And so I'm going to crop it again so that I can get that tiny bit of extra off the image. Because my lighting was pretty good, there's not a lot more editing I need to do with this photograph. One of the most important parts to documenting your works of art is to make sure that the images are an accurate reflection of your work. The color should match and you should never edit out any imperfections. That image didn't need many edits, so let's try something a little harder using the stock photo app on iPhone. So one of the first things I like to do is just try the auto settings. So if I tap that, I can see it lighten it up a little bit, but there's still a little too much warmth in the picture. So I'm going to scroll over until I find warmth. And using that white of the poster board as a guide, I'm going to adjust the warmth until it feels neutral. I don't want it too blue, but if I push it too far, it can go almost orange. So what I want to do is kind of find a happy medium where it feels perfectly neutral white. If it still doesn't feel just perfect, you can also adjust the tint, which will adjust the shade from pink to green. So I'm going to tweak this again until I get that background looking as, as neutral white as possible. The background still feels a little bit dark, and so I'm going to scroll over until I find shadows, and we're going to lighten those shadows up. So that helps overexpose them a little bit. And I'm going to scroll over to exposure. And I'm going to bump that up just a little bit too. You have to be careful with this setting though, because if you go too far, you can blow out some of your color and some of your details. So you don't want to push it so it's blinding white. That's too much. So now that I have my exposure just right, I notice that it's still just a touch too warm. So I'm going to scroll back over to warmth and tweak that just a little bit more to try and get that white back to neutral. And that looks pretty good. Next I'll show you how to use the default camera app in Photoshop Express to document three-dimensional works of art. Photographing 3D works of art is a bit more difficult than 2D works. We need to pay more attention to lighting, contrast, cast shadows, and getting accurate color. If we're photographing really large works of art, especially sculptures that may be outside, we also need to pay attention to the surroundings. And because those sculptures are outside, we can't really control the lighting. So we also have to pay attention to the weather and the time of day. Now I'll show you how to edit those photos in one of my favorite photo editing apps, Photoshop Express. So open the app and simply tap on the image you want to edit. Just like in Instagram, there's a series of pre-made filters at the bottom of the app. You'll want to avoid using these and make sure that you edit your photographs manually. So one of the first things we'll do is use the crop tool located at the bottom of the app to crop this image. So what I'm looking for when I'm going to crop is to make sure I've got a good border around the outside of the work and also to try to get rid of any uh, blue painter's tape at the top of the poster board. So the tools we're going to be using to edit our photos in PS Express are all located underneath the adjustments section. When you tap that, you'll see a series of new tools that pop up such as light, color, effects, and so on. One of the reasons I really like PS Express is because it uses the depth sensor in your phone's camera lens to help you identify the subject, foreground, and background, making edits a whole lot easier. In order to get rid of those shadows that are being cast on the poster board, I'll tap background on the right, which highlights it in pink then light at the bottom, and then I'll tap shadows. From there, I can use the slider bar to overexpose those shadows, making them almost disappear. Now I can tap subject on the right side, and then again, use that slider bar to lighten up those shadows towards the center of my object. If you do this too much, your whites may start to get blown out, so you can tap highlights, and then bring that back down. Now that we have our exposure adjusted, let's look at color. Unfortunately, PS Express does not have a white balance eyedropper, so everything has to be done manually. So what I'm looking to adjust with color is just barely tweaking the settings so that that background is as neutral white as possible. 
This is why it's so important to make sure that you turn off True Tone and Night Shift on your settings before you even get started. The last thing I need to do is save my image. While there are lots of other settings in PS Express, the ones that we just covered are the ones that I use the most. There's not really a save button in PS Express, and so what you do is tap the top left arrow, which will prompt you to save the file. And now you can share good quality photos.